Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I've had a bunch of people ask me, how's your vacation going? What are you up to? What have you learned? And all of that jazz. So I figured I would drop by for an impromptu live stream and fill you in. I'll send this out on the audio feed as well, just so we can catch up. I really figured I couldn't go two weeks without having a live stream and saying hello to all you guys. So how you doing? Me and the missus, we've been having a lot of fun so far. We spent uh, two nights in Nashville, had a great time, went down on Broadway, had ourselves a few drinks at Tootsie's, enjoyed ourselves, had a great meal, set out on a balcony, had a lot of supper. It was just a real good time. It was warm there. It was beautiful. So I figured, hey, Ted McDonald, how are you? I'm not that far from Ted right now at all. I figured I'd sit out here on the balcony with the waves in the background. I did some audio tests and I really hope this is coming through clear. If anybody can hear me okay, just give me a thumbs up in the comments there. That would be great. But I figured it would be fun for me to come on and share some, <laughs> Ted's got his thermals on and I'm sitting here in my shorts. Figured I'd give you some thoughts on my travels in America from a Canadian. Uh, all random, a lot of fun. We've had a great time so far. Let's see. So I think the first thing we did, we ended up at a Hobby Lobby. And you guys probably seen my post on social. But I got to say, the first thing I noticed about Hobby Lobby, we'd never been there before. The missus really wanted to go. And I would say that its clientele is definitely kind of middle-aged white women. Nothing wrong with that at all. And it feels like in order to shop there, you really need to be um, possibly grown up in a 1980s evangelical household. It's definitely got a Christian flair to it. That's not a problem. It's just a rather interesting place. From there, we ended up going to Dollar Tree. And we, we have Dollar Tree in Canada, so that wasn't a big deal. But my most interesting interaction on our vacation so far was the guy behind me in the line. Oh, buddy. You guys would have loved him. Uh, I, I saved Becky from having to talk to him. I got between her and me. He's the type of guy that had long hair, was kind of greasy, and if you had to guess, probably hadn't showered in since 93, 94 maybe, and he started talking about these videos. He said, have you seen this new video? I'm like, no, I haven't seen this new video. He goes, yeah, 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 it's this uh, senator down in the States, and he's talking about furries, and I had to scratch my head for a minute. I'm like, furries? Apparently, if you guys don't know, these are grown-ass men who dress up in uh, animal costumes. And hey, to each their own, not a problem. I love it. Whatever you want to do, as long as you ain't stealing or hurting somebody else, it's all that matters. And this guy proceeded to start talking to me about being a furry and how much he loves furry. And it was a rather interesting conversation. He was way too loud, way too boisterous to be able to share <laughs> that kind of stuff to a complete stranger in the line at Dollar Tree. So we had fun with that. Loved it. Fastest traffic I have seen anywhere so far has been on the I-95 and the I-4 in Florida. I was in, I, I like staying in the fast lane, but I was in the middle lane in Florida and we were doing 90 mile an hour, just barely keeping up to the middle lane. The fast lane was lapping us. I loved it. So that like my Canadians, that's in the ballpark of 150 kilometers an hour and the traffic was pulling away from us. It's fun. I tell you, there is nothing better than the interstate system. You guys have got it so good down here. I love the interstates. You make great time. The roads are uh, they're as good as they are in Canada, except they're faster, they're more direct, they have better service on them, and all around, just a lot of fun. It's like pretending you're in NASCAR or something. From there, where else have we gone? Ah, yes. Welcome to Florida. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you. <laughs> we, I love it. Like, I, I would drive here all the time. We went to Orlando today. I'll chat about that in a few minutes. But I just, yeah, there's something just, I don't know, something beautiful about being down here. We, I think we would spend six months of the year here if we absolutely could. Uh, finally, finally, finally went to a Harbor Freight. And I enjoyed it. I guess. I, honestly, after it being hyped up for so long, it 
was just okay. It reminded me of a Princess Auto in Canada with better cordless tools and way better generators. I was trying to figure out how I could buy myself a couple of those generators and fold them up and bring them back in my carry-on suitcase, but that ain't gonna happen. However, Becky did talk me into buying a few of their cordless tools. So yes, the free state of Florida, Ted, that is one of my favorite parts about being down here. We, yeah, so I bought a bunch of their, uh, the red cordless tools there. So you're gonna get to see some crazy Canadian reviewing Harbor Freight tools when I get back to Canada. I enjoyed it. I got the uh, cordless glue stick. I got the cordless inflator and their impact driver and a flashlight. And I'll probably go back and get one or two more. Becky's sitting over there, so I have to be quiet about buying tools. But uh, yeah, uh, where else have we gone so far? Oh, Chick-fil-A. So Chick-fil-A. <sighs> Again, another store that in my mind didn't live up to the hype. The chicken was just so-so. And if there's anybody on here who absolutely loves Chick-fil-A, I apologize. But it was just, you know, going to be, <laughs> Ted says going to be a lot of smoke. I might have missed something there. But yeah, it, uh, yeah, Chick-fil-A was just, eh, you know. Now, their frozen lemonade was to die for. That was so, so good. Ah, Sol, how are you? Oh, oh, the smoke, yeah. Said he blew up the Harbor Freight hammer drill in under five minutes. Well, how are you, Souls? I can't remember what part of the country you were in. If you can refresh my memory, that would be great. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm just, honestly, I'm more excited about trying their cordless glue gun. I know that's absolutely foolish, and Ryobi has it. Oh, and the other thing I picked up was something I've been looking for for ages, and it's something so stupid and so simple. But it's one of those, it's like a dustpan that clips onto your five-gallon pail. They only sell them at Lowe's in the States. So I picked up two of those and i'm going to take them back and do some reviews on them missouri right on yeah he's a yankee yes for a long time as a canadian i thought all Yan yankees were anybody south of the canadian border but i've been i've realized that i've been misinformed hey babe where'd we go to supper the other night uh, the very first night in tennessee cracker barrel right yeah so we went to cracker barrel and i have an awful affinity for uh, biscuits and gravy love biscuits and gravy it's one of the best things about the united states and i made the mistake of ordering peach tea while i was there and the lady was such an incredible waitress she just kept bringing me and bringing me peach tea and i think if i put a straw in that peach tea it could have stood up it was so sweet there was more sugar than there was peach and tea in it but it was good oh my god was it ever good nashville was just an incredible atmosphere we liked that a lot <laughs> Soul says, I'm a damn, nope, I'm a damn Yankee. That is a Yankee that comes down south and stays. Nothing wrong with that. We went by a um, rebel or Confederate cemetery today. We're going to check that out tomorrow, see what that's all about. Where else have we gone? Yes, we spent the day running around Orlando today, which was cool. Oh, another thought. This is something that I like uh, quite, quite nicely. I told Becky the other day, Florida is like the complete opposite of California. It has all the nice, <laughs> it has all the nice parts of California with none of the shitty parts. It's all a bunch of, well, I shouldn't say all, but the people I've run into down here so far have been gun-toting, freedom-loving Floridians who love the warm weather. Um, I'm sure, you know, I mean, the first thing you notice when you're in California, everywhere we've been was a huge homeless population. I'm sure there is that here too. But for the most part, it's a, a kind of bread and butter type people up this way. We're in the Daytona Beach area, and we've really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot more than we did San Diego and L.A. when we were there. Of course, different way, different lifestyle. Ted says, we got a place down here close to me in West Palm, Tim, that has all-you-can-eat biscuits and gravy. Oh, dear God. Becky would never be able to sleep next to me if I ate all-you-can-eat biscuits and gravy. And uh, yeah, so from there, we went to a place called Old Town in Orlando today, which was neat. Not everything was open, but it was like an old-fashioned town that's set up like a, ah, I don't even know what you call it. Um, just, it's like a shop, an outdoor shopping mall. It was nice. I enjoyed the place across the street a lot better. We went to Machine Gun America, and I got to, uh, I can't say exercise my freedoms, but I got to enjoy your guys' freedoms while I was there. Got to shoot uh, four different uh, machine guns, which I can't think of the names of them right now because I'm on my phone, so I can't keep good notes like I normally do. But the uh, the one that they called the little ass kicker was so much fun. You guys will see a like 15 second video on my personal Facebook 
the muzzle flashes out of that sucker. I, I just had a little smile like a kid in a candy store when it was done. It was way, way too much fun. You could spend a lot of money and a lot of time there. Went to a, a, tac, uh, a store called Tactical Shit. Got myself some inappropriate tactical patches and a really funny Mickey Mouse apocalyptic shirt, which I will, uh, yes, Ted says he loves Machine Gun America. I do too now. I brought my uh, target sheet home with me. And yeah, <laughs> Soul says, welcome to the free world. Trust me, I think if we could, we would spend as much time as we possibly could down here. We love it. Our type of people down this area too. We really, really enjoy it. I think next year we're going to see, I don't know how, maybe not by next year, but within two years, we're going to try to be spending a month at a time down here to start with. Maybe the freedom will start rubbing off on us a little more each time. Went to some Cuban food trucks today for dessert. I got a, I don't know, like a Frappuccino. Becky got mini donuts, but it was just a really cool atmosphere. It was kind of in a parking lot behind the Machine Gun America. Then we went to this place called Icon, which has a 400 foot uh, Ferris wheel, an indoor aquarium, uh, Madame Tussauds wax museum. It was just really nice. But honestly, I think the best part about being down here has been able to, so far we've been, what, four or five days on the road, and there is nothing better than being able to spend uninterrupted time with my wife, not having to deal with 95% of my business stuff. Phone calls still come. I still deal with them. I get my uh, my son to handle the stuff there. Hey, JS, how is PA Prepper? I am uh, south of the border right now as well, my friend. It's nice to have you here. Oh, yeah, another quick announcement. I am going to be doing a live stream this Tuesday. It's going to be 12.30 Central Time. I'm going to be on the, I don't even know what they call it, but I'm going to be on the noontime live stream with John Willis and Nicole Sauce. I'm going to be on there with them. So I should have the audio of that afterwards to upload into the podcast as well. So that's going to be fun. We are getting closer and closer to LFTN Spring Workshop. Not that I wanted to rush here because the sooner we got to go there, the sooner we got to leave our enjoyable area down here. It, I got to say, we, two days ago, they had like an inch of snow in our hometown out there. My son had to go and actually shovel off the walkways at the rental. And we're sitting here 80 degrees and enjoying it. It's been good for us. Like I said, the best thing has been so far, all the interrupted time me and the missus get together. And it's good for a relationship. It's good for our stress levels. It's just good to travel. And what was it? Mark Twain said that the best cure for prejudice is to travel. And it's true. It opens your eyes. You just you enjoy it. You forget. You get stuck in your ways, you know. And for us, we were basically, I don't want to say held prisoner, but damn close to being held prisoner for the last two years in our own country without being able to leave. So, yeah, and I mean, we don't have a mask mandate in Alberta anymore, which is good, but who knows if it could come back like that because they've done it to us once already. But, it, hey, Rachel Brown, how are you? Another fellow pa -er. but it's been so nice. I just love, I mean, we've basically just been in Tennessee and Florida, and the mindset here is just live life and enjoy yourselves, and it has been exactly that so far. You know what? You see people wearing masks, and that's okay because that's their choice. But they're humans, and they're adults, and they're allowed to do it. We went a couple nights ago out to the end. <laughs> Thanks, JS. I appreciate that. We went out to the end of Daytona to a place called North Turn, which is basically the birthplace of the Daytona 500. It's where they used to beach race. That was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. We had a meal there at that restaurant called North Turn. Yeah, it was okay. Then we went to a handmade, homemade ice cream place called Cowlix, and I had the best Sunday I've ever had in my life. All this is food, and you can just imagine. <laughs> uh, it was a pina colada Sunday. It was just handmade ice cream with real coconut, real pineapple, real whipped cream, and a real cherry. Not said. But beyond that, I think we're going to spend a bunch of days just exploring. I'm going to try to do maybe one or two more live stream updates just because I miss you guys and I enjoy chatting with you. Uh, I know these are 
uh, you know, there's not a lot of teaching or sharing involved in this other than hearing about what we're up to. But enough people asked me and said, hey, I'd love to I'd love to um, hear what you're doing. Rachel says masks are kind of like, here's your sign. <laughs> you guys remember that when the blue collar comedy tour came out? That had got to have been the funniest jokes I'd ever heard there. That Ron White or whatever with the here's your sign jokes. I'd never heard them before. But yes, that's exactly what it is. And Ted says, I've been on the Daytona Speedway at 150 mile an hour. That would be fun. I absolutely could enjoy that. Uh, yeah, I mean, 150 kilometers an hour at, what, 90 mile an hour was fast enough for me. And we enjoyed it. Yeah, but that would be that would be pretty cool, Ted. What were you driving? And they had, down there at that restaurant, they had a couple of kind of old beach cars. So that was kind of neat. And yeah, for the next few days, we're just going to, walk on the beach we're going to relax we're going to eat our asses off and then <laughs> get back on the old uh keto bandwagon when we get back north and just keep on keeping on but yeah i'm excited hopefully we can find a oh, corvette nice ted hopefully we can find some time to shoot some more guns and then i'm really 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 looking forward to meeting up with all of our like I call them, imaginary internet friends, all of my longtime preparedness, LFTN, workshop, TSP community members that I've never got to meet in real life yet. I know we've got Amy Dingman's going to be down there. Letty Lou is going to be there. Ken's going to be there. Aaron and Nate's going to be there. Actually, it was pretty cool. Nate sent me a message the other night. He, uh, he Rachel says, getting back on the keto. Good for you. Yes, that's. I always feel better when I'm on keto. Uh, yeah, so Nate reached out to Angry American, the author of the Going Home book series, while he had a live stream the other night, and uh, hopefully made a good connection. I, I was going to wait till we got back to reach out to see if we can get him on the show, but hell, why not? So I, I sent uh, his missus, who handles a lot of his booking and stuff, a message on Facebook yesterday. So hopefully we hear back. We'll keep pushing that on because I'd love to have a American, Angry American, on the show. We can pick his brain. He's an awesome prepper and preparedness guy. Hey, little Klondike, how are you tonight? Yeah, just an incredible uh, preparedness guy who really loves to share his knowledge. I've watched a few uh, re, um, repeats of some of his live streams he's done with other content creators, and he just seems like a genuine down-to-earth guy. Plus, it would be great to have the guy on there that wrote the books that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Josh Sloan, that's PA Prepper says, if you sense a disembodied spirit in Tennessee, it's me. No worries, man. I can send you pictures if you want. And I can imagine you might even catch me doing a little karaoke. Especially if you get a little bourbon in me. That won't be too bad. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a really, really good relaxing time that we've been long, that's been long overdue for us, for sure. But yeah, and who else is going to be there? Yeah, I, I think I listed everybody. And I'm sure I forgot a few other people who's going to be there. Josh is going to be there in a disembodied spirit like uh, Bill Cosby and Ghost Dad or Patrick Swayze and Ghost. I think I actually got both those references on the first try without forgetting. And I've been uh, practicing up my presentation, making sure that it's as funny and <laughs> as complete as it can be. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And Oh, yeah. Tactical Redneck. He'll be great to, uh, to meet up with down there. Finally, even get to meet Nicole. I've never met her in person before. So overall, it'll be a, an excellent time. And then when do we fly back? May 2nd, we got to go back to the Great White North and I got to pretend like I'm going to be a landscaper again because by the time we get back, the grass should be growing. And uh, yes, I, we're going to try, Ted. We're going to try really hard to get down that way for a mojito uh, or anything. It would be great. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, beyond that, four nights in Tennessee, back on the other side. Enjoying our freedom a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to try to hit a coin shop one of these days, see if we can find a little precious silver to take back with us. And just pick up, uh, turns out I was going to buy a, a gator head. Not allowed to ship them back to Canada with me. So didn't want to get in trouble and end up, you know, falling on the short side of the law, which would never be a good thing at all. As far as preparedness and prepping goes, I, I uh, just a few little thoughts or things. I found at least that my, what do you want to call it, spatial awareness or just, all, you know, always keeping an eye out. I've been a little better at it this time. I'm usually pretty lazy with looking around and situational awareness. That's what I've been, you know, a little more 
proactive with locking doors, with checking mirrors, with looking around corners before we go places, just because I got to look out for the missus. And that's always been a big struggle for us. Hi, Donna. How are you? <laughs> uh, Rachel says, if it wasn't an 11-hour trip, I'd try to meet up. That would be awesome. But you know what? Uh, we're, we'll be down that way again. I'm sure we'll be on the East Coast. I'm going to be in North Carolina in September. And, uh, oh, I would love to go to Key West. That's like seven hours from here. We are talking about going to Dunedin, but that's a three-and-a-half-hour each-way trip to catch a single A. Now, if this were February when the Blue Jays, my Jays right there, if we can get it on there, yep. If this were February and they were playing spring training, we would be there for sure. But, man, it's kind of hard to justify a seven-hour round trip for <laughs> going uh, just for a single A Jays game. But we might yet. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, when I was going on the Ferris wheel today, they brought a metal detector out. So I had to take my neck knife off and leave it with the missus. It's the first time that anything like that's happened to me in a long time. And, uh, yeah, that was just odd or I wasn't expecting it. So you, you gotta kind of figure out a way. Just, yeah. Just expect the unexpected when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm. Other than that, that's about it. You know, we make sure we. Well, what we make sure we lock our hotel door. This one kind of sticks. So we've we've come back once where we didn't quite pull it shut. So just that kind of stuff. You know, always the looking over the shoulder thing and just being careful. Also, if we end up spending a bunch of time in Florida, it turns out that non-resident alien Canadians, if you're down here for any significant period of time, can actually get your concealed carry permit. So if we end up deciding we want to become snowbirds and live down here for six months of the year, I know what I'm doing. It'll be a lot of fun. And I definitely, at least on our next trip, or if we can find somewhere in Tennessee, we'd love to, wouldn't we, babe, shoot some more machine guns? Or at least she can watch me shoot machine guns because she enjoyed it. <laughs> I think she just liked watching me be a little kid. But yeah, beyond that, guys, this has been what it is. We're having a great old time. We're relaxing, eating way too much, uh, not drinking a whole lot, which is neither here nor there. Going to meet up with some good friends. Yeah. Oh, hey, John Palmer. How are you? So how has everybody been? What have you guys been up to? Uh, the I've been a little uh, slack on hanging out in the Telegram group because I have... Yes, and Ted, that... So here's another thing. Ted mentions that. He says, uh, I don't... I wish I could... I don't I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, I'm not even going to try. I'll just... Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was very uh, interested in that too, Rachel. But uh, Ted says, Toolman Tim's workshop is a snowbird. So that's the idea. If we can turn this podcast and the YouTube channel into a significant moneymaker, more beyond, hey, Letty Lou said she tuned in to hear shooting guns. Yes, Letty. I've, oh, no, you're not on my, I'll see if I can post it on Instagram or somewhere later. I'll, I'll put it up in the Telegram group, but I went shooting machine guns today. But yes, the idea would be at some point for us to be able to spend one or two or three months or more down south and enjoying ourselves, letting our businesses run themselves up there. And continue to do the content creation down here and hopefully get some more speaking engagements that are uh, you know a little more prestigious and hopefully turn this into something that brings in enough residual income that it can offset what little expenses we have down here uh, yeah we actually this hotel it's you know it's beautiful it's right on the water and we booked it for eight days by mistake for eight nights for less than a thousand dollars so we have um couldn't do any better. And I know we could find places a lot cheaper than that down here if we wanted to stay long term. But yeah, that that is definitely uh, that you mentioned it, Ted, one of my long term goals for sure has been to turn that into a content creation kind of ongoing thing so I can do more of it down here. And then, hey, I could, you know, buy some tools, review some tools, sell some tools. We could have a lot of fun with it for sure. And Letty Lou says, that's how you enjoy America. You're friggin' right it is. <laughs> I appreciate, I will appreciate the hell out of your second amendment rights and I will enjoy them while I'm down here. Had a good conversation with the guy at the gun range. and He had no idea that the uh, AR-15 was completely banned in Canada now and he couldn't even believe it. And I thought, yeah, ain't that the truth. But yeah, and uh, Rachel says one giant write-off. And yes, that is true, guys. That one of the beauties of having a vacation or of having your own business and doing what we're doing is that a significant portion of this Hi, Willina, how are you? Is absolutely a tax write-off. And remember, what does Jack say? That if, you know, yeah, 
don't hate money because anytime you can have fun and make it a tax right off at the same time, nothing wrong with that. You want to make sure you can. So, yeah. And yeah, like I said, the Telegram group, I've been a little scarce in there. I try to pop in as I can. I try. <laughs> Ted says his AR-15 identifies as a unicorn. I think I met a guy at uh, Dollar Tree the other day that identified as a unicorn as well. Um, a furry. Yeah, a furry, furry unicorn. Oh, boy, he was something else. And uh, yeah, so as far <laughs> up here, a lot of uh, you, you ask anybody, a lot of the um, AR-15s and other things like that had boating accidents. It happens. Hi, Martinson family. How are you? Nice to have you. Yes, I don't know how. Have you, have you guys, uh, has your snow melted there? When we left a week ago, you guys were supposed to get like two foot of, of uh, nasty old snow. And uh, JS says my sub 2K does too. <laughs> yeah, I got a, a buddy there, Carl Brown, the one that does uh, the Strange Truth on Prepper Broadcast Network the night after me. He lives in, I want to say it's upstate New York. And they had like... 18 inches of snow the other day this has just been a fucking awful winter for everybody that's you know even remotely close to where santa claus lives and i, I think they were without power for a day and a half and i think he maybe even had some i don't want to say crops in the ground but maybe some spring starters that kind of stuff so we always got to prepare for that kind of thing too and then when we get back i'm kind of you know i don't want to get we definitely don't want to head back yet, but I'm quite excited about all the different projects we have on go. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go too far into. Oh, so <laughs> Martinson family says storming like a motherfucker right now. Freezing rain and snow. Well, I'm getting some of the salt spray off the beach, so I'm very sorry, Martinson family. I don't mean to be like that. I apologize. But <laughs> Rachel Brown, finally somebody does. Ted, I appreciate you as well. I'm sure that's what we're talking about because how can we not love Ted? Ted's been one of my... I don't even know when you first found my channel, Ted, but you've been around since, oh man, I don't know. Seems like a long time anyway. I'm close to two years, which would be one of the first ones. I know you and Ryan Collette, Carrie Brown, uh, Joseph Mills, you guys have all been around for a long time. And I, if it weren't for you guys, I, yeah, absolutely appreciate it. And when we get back, I've been trying to get the coffee website up and running, but they're having uh, technical difficulties on their end. So I can't finalize that till we get back to, you know, countryside, but whatever, not a big deal. It'll be up and it'll be running. And then as soon as that's off, we're going to start finishing up, finalizing some designs for the patch of the month club. And we'll go from there. Yes. The DeWalt, that's where you found me, Ted, the DeWalt pole saw review. Well, that was my second ever. I can't remember. It was my first ever or my second ever review. So that's coming up on next month. That'll be two years since I started doing tool review videos. It was two years since I launched my channel in February. In May, I'll be, I'll be due to do a two-year follow-up review on that DeWalt pole saw. I'm pretty excited about that. That, that doesn't even seem right at all. I don't know where that time went, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. And the thing I like about uh, YouTube is it's, uh, I was telling Becky that YouTube money, the Amazon money, it always just kind of shows up and it's there and you're like, oh, this is a it's just a little extra bonus that you forget about until it shows up. But yeah, it, uh, yeah, that pole saw review is still going strong. It's like one of my top 15 videos. Uh, it's top three or four all time for views. And definitely one of the top ones for revenue. Of course, my generator videos are the best. So yeah, it's been two years on that DeWalt pole saw, which is pretty freaking crazy. And I have an idea. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this one public too. Because every time I go into Lowe's, I look at their... And Ted, if you can remember the name of the brand, I can't remember, it's green, maybe it's Ego. They have those green and gray, incredible lawn care equipment. I'm going to reach out to Lowe's and see if they'll send me some of that to test out because I want to run their cordless gear and test it out, but I'm not about to spend a whole bunch more money on a whole bunch of new cordless tools. So it's about damn time. Maybe Lowe's will send me some so I can test them. Even if they'll just send me test units, I got to send back, but I really, we were in there the other day and they got a 600 FM backpack blower and that sucker, I've got to play with that. I want to try that for snow. I want to try that for grass, all of the above and just some of their other gear too. It just looks like pretty good, solid gear. The batteries look like they're built well. And yeah. Yes. Ego best in his, in uh, Ted's opinion. I, or, oh, I think that might be what that is or maybe I'm anyway, but yeah, I, it looks awesome. The batteries 
you know, they're built like a brick shit house. They're heavy and solid. But yeah, I'm going to do my best to get some my hand on some of that gear to test out. And wouldn't I love <laughs> to try out? I'm sure it's the Ego that has the cordless zero turn mower now. That sucker is incredible. I couldn't even imagine. You imagine not having to run any gas on that and just driving around, not having, you wouldn't even need to wear hearing protection if you didn't want to. I could just wear my uh, earbuds and enjoy it. Like the benefits to cordless are incredible. And that's something else. Uh, the truck we have rented has that wonderful, I think it's called adaptive cruise control. And that has absolutely changed how easy it is to drive across country. I cannot wait for automatic vehicles. They're, I, I know they're coming. I mean, we've seen Teslas all over the place down here. But we are, I, once you're set and you're going and you're in the fast lane or the middle lane, as long as it's not like bumper to bumper traffic, you set it. And if the guy in front of you slows down a little bit, it just slows down for you. And if they emergency brake, your car emergency brakes for you so much easier on my legs and it just makes you feel so much more relaxed while you're driving i love it and then the, the last rental we had a while back had that lane assist that would actually keep you in your lane so any of any and all these things like in the next i keep telling becky probably the next five years you're going to see autonomous driving be the norm at least on the highways and that's really where you need it you know the the final mile of driving in towns and cities i'm fine with driving by myself but for those, you know, 10 hours that we drove between Nashville and Florida, yeah, that uh, even that adaptive cruise control was incredible. So OPE, Outdoor Power Equipment. How did I not know that's what that stood for? Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I always appreciate that. But yeah, so that, like I said, that adaptive cruise control has been a lifesaver for me. It just, yeah. And the, uh, the blind spot indicators are great too. I really like that. When you go to turn out, I mean, obviously you do your shoulder checks, but a lot of times you can just look at your mirror, you see the orange, you're like, okay, we'll wait and we will change up after that. But yeah, beyond that, we're just going to keep eating, drinking, relaxing, and having a good time, I think. And if anybody, yeah, if anybody has anything to throw into the comments tonight, throw her out there. Um, beyond that, I said we, the Telegram group, you know, it's been there. We got, there'll be a, a Sunday, uh, pre-recorded it should be sunday i think we got another three more of the 15 minute pre-recorded episodes <laughs> rachel says to give you a kiss on <laughs> i will she's right over there she's i think she's are you watching too hun oh yeah she's watching along with us so that's great yeah oh okay yeah yeah but yeah uh so we got three more of those 15 minute episodes and i may end up turning that into a semi-regular thing because they have been hugely popular while i've been gone so it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't mind having a couple of like shorter pre-recorded episodes throughout the week just so we could, I don't know, focus on, you know, the, the principles of preparedness. That would be a, a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's a passion that I always enjoy talking about. And uh, JS says, party on, Tim. Yes, party on, Garth. Party on, Wayne. But beyond that, guys, we've been having a great time. I'll do another one of these live streams probably just before we leave Florida. And I'm going to try my damnedest to do one of these while we are in Nashville. And I definitely will record my presentation. So if I can get the audio off that, I'll upload that to the, uh, to the podcast feed. Upload the video to the YouTube channel. Next week, Tuesday, I'll be on with, uh, like I said, John Willis from SOE Tactical, which will be great. I've never had a chance to actually chat with John yet. So I'm very much looking forward to it. He's a guy I very much respect and look up to. Martinson family says all my Winchesters identify as hole punches. Yeah, that's funny how that is. The Winchesters they know about, I mean, uh, that exist. Yes, absolutely. But guys, beyond that, I think that's it. I'm going to go check on my son. He's got to go spray for some ants at a rental while I take care of everything. And yes, Josh Shalone, thank you once again for reminding everybody to hit the like button. It always helps. And yeah, keep sharing that podcast out there guys this uh, the audio of this will go up there just to say hello so everybody has something to listen to to keep me up and going in the uh, search engine algorithms and guys i appreciate you appreciate you so much that i couldn't go a week without chatting with you because i always enjoy it so guys as always stay happy stay healthy and have a great week